Friends, family, graduates, good afternoon. My name is Talal Al-Hamad, and I'm currently one of the senior class marshals for the class of 2011 in Quincy House. Thank you so much for joining us today to celebrate the end of four incredible years at Harvard University, but more importantly, to celebrate the beginning of a new adventure away from the safety of these ivy-covered walls. And who knew we could do this under such great weather conditions? Today, I have the honor of introducing Ms. Ellen Gordon-Reeves, the incoming president of the Har Harvard Alumni Association. Ms. Reeves received her bachelor's degree from Harvard College in 1983. She soon after that received her master's degree from the Harvard School of Education. She then continued to work as the education editor for the New Press for 15 years. In 2009, she published her book, Can I Wear My Nose Ring for My First Interview, a crash course in finding, landing, and keeping your first job, a crash course I think we all need. She's about to start a new job as a blogger for CBS called The Job Shrink. She is currently serves on the Harvard Club of New York City Board and was the former president of the Radcliffe Club of New York. Please, give, please join me in giving a hand to Ms. Ellen Gordon-Reeves. Okay, please keep your thumbs where I may see them at all times. So, you know, thanks to all. Hello, class of 2011, family and friends, Dean Hammonds, uh, other distinguished guests, Amy Poehler, Amy's parents, my mom, <laughs> and fans of Amy Poehler who just happened to be strolling through Harvard Yard today. I'm Ellen Reeves, here to welcome you to the Harvard Alumni Association, otherwise known as the HAA. What feels to me like just a few short years ago, I stood on this very stage. I was the class secretary, like Alex, and I had written the class ode. Mine went like this. Fair Harvard, to Ivy we jubilant throng, but confess seeds of doubt at the core. Bear detestable nights to the page that is last, to the wage that will sate us the more. We relish the hype of our ancestors' worth as we journey to fame from our dorm. First hour of bewilderment, au revoir, fright, with veritas, weather the storm. So about the hype of our ancestors' worth. By this time tomorrow, you too will be Harvard alums and as you certainly know by now, everyone has an opinion about what it means to go here, especially people who didn't. It's up to us to be ambassadors for this brand, to temper hubris with humility, to defy the stereotypes, and help others understand that despite our degrees, we're just normal, down-to-earth people who, at 17, happen to be, as the admissions office liked to say in my day, well lopsided individuals. When I graduated, after a stint working for minimum wage at Henry Bears Park, a toy store on Huron Avenue, and I'm sorry, I'm probably making your families a little nervous right now, I became a teacher and a book editor, pursuits for which my Harvard education had prepared me supremely well because it was here that I learned to speak with absolute confidence and authority about books which I had not actually read. <laughs> I shouldn't really admit this, but once a section leader wrote on one of my finals, your essays were exceptionally well written and I'd like to give you an A but since you couldn't answer any of the IDs, it's clear you haven't read any of these books. <laughs> Busted. Now, when I was here, we didn't have classes like science and cooking. So when I moved to Paris to teach, I studied at the Cordon Bleu, where I learned practical, hands-on things I'd never learned at Harvard, like how to stuff a quail with its own liver. Eventually, I did what any self-respecting history and lit 
of France and America honors concentrator does after writing a thesis on Sartre and the role of fiction in existentialism. Now you know why I was working in a toy store. How <laughs> to book called Can I Wear My Nose Ring to the Interview, a job hunting guide for recent grads. And my mantra is stop looking for a job and start looking for a person. The right person will lead you to the right job or opportunity or whatever you're looking for, an apartment, a roommate, a friend, a community service project, and this is what we have for you at the HAA. People, lots of people, over 350,000 of them from the college and the grad schools in 187 clubs all across the country and around the world and over 39 shared interest groups, and most of them want to help you in any way they can because we believe in the power of this institution as a force for good in the world. We believe in the power of this community, and most of all, we believe in you. So I stand here today as the incoming president of the HAA, the closest I imagine I'll ever come to being king of the world. But I can't lie to you, sometimes it's hard to retain your sense of self in this community in which if you win a Pulitzer Prize, somebody else won a Nobel. And if you win a Nobel, someone else won too. So as important as I'd like to feel as president-elect of this august body, when the commencement and class day speakers were announced, I quickly understood that really all I'd be today was the other Ellen, the one who isn't the president of Liberia, and the warm-up act for Amy Poehler. <laughs> Which is strange, considering the similar paths that Amy and I have taken. We both spent time in Massachusetts growing up. Both did shows with Conan O'Brien. OK, mine was a soap opera in the Mather House Library, and hers was The Tonight Show. But <laughs> you know, we both trained at Second City and in Chicago, moved to New York, uh, where after that our, our paths diverged. And I'm OK with that, really. I think of the high holiday story I read every year about Rabbi Zusia, who gets a complex about Moses and all of the other overachieving rabbis he's hanging out with. On his deathbed, he tells his students, now I realize at the end of my life, no one is asking, why were you not Moses, but why were you not Zusia? I hope you go on to lead countries and companies and cure the world of its ills and create great art and comedy and new social media as so many of our distinguished alums have done if that's what you want to do. But forget about your Harvard potential, a notion which has sadly paralyzed more than one of our alums, and be who you're meant to be and who you want to become and let the HAA help you along the way. We're celebrating Harvard's 375th birthday next year, and my message to alumni is, Harvard is where you are. I mean, it will still be here. It's not going anywhere. Although sometimes, just for fun, I tell people, Harvard is changing its name, and you should see people's reactions. <laughs> I hope you'll come back to Cambridge often, but don't wait for a class reunion. As far as I'm concerned, if there are two alums in a room, even a virtual room, it's a reunion. On June 21st, we're having global networking nights in cities around the world and across the country. We have fall welcome to the city events planned, but we can't let you know what's going on or tell you about Crimson Compass, our career database, or public service on the map if we can't find you. So when you get emails about signing up for a post.harvard address or joining a local club, the New York club even has a booth right out there in the yard, I hope you'll do it. There are lots of ways to get involved. Help us make Harvard happen wherever you are. But you've got to reach out and connect if you want to experience the amazing power of this network, as my buddy HAA president Bob Bowie has reminded us all year. Let's start right now. Take a few seconds and introduce yourself to someone near you you don't know, next to you, in front of you, behind you, 
find someone, meet one person, say one thing about yourself and see what happens. But when I say stop, you're really going to have to stop. Just take a second. This is what we do. Meet someone. Meet someone. All right, they even got me a gavel. All right, folks, I could let it go on for another hour, you know? Uh, but really, this is what the HAA is all about, helping people connect to each other, to the university, to students. It totally floats my boat to think that maybe in the next 24 hours or in the next year, or at your 25th reunion, or on a street halfway around the world, you might just reconnect with this person. A stranger will have become a familiar face, and after that, possibly a friend. The lesson is, reach out. Don't wait for someone else to break the ice. Just do it. Au revoir, a bientôt. Never forget, veritas is satire backwards and welcome to the HAA.